We've shipped for some time uh, the threading unit or the T-thread class. It's in the systems class, systems classes area, and that's sort of the underpinnings of of uh, of what's going on. And then there's the system threading class uh, uh, unit that we have as well. We'll get to that in a moment. I just wanted to bring up one of our old famous uh, sample applications that uh, that we've shipped in the past uh, threading. This was the famous threaded sorting demo. Uh, there's a little bit of history to this. Uh, not this version. This is the C++ version. Um, when we had, what was it, C Builder 1 and then C Builder 3, we went from, and, and Delphi 1 to Delphi 2, we went from 16-bit windows in C Builder 1, Delphi 1, to 32-bit windows for Windows 95. And I was on the airplane from San Jose going up to Seattle to show our support for you know, threading and everything in Windows 95 at the launch on Microsoft's campus. And I realized that we didn't have a threading sample. Uh, to demo in this little booth area in this tent on the lawn on Microsoft's campus where a bunch of uh, third-party vendors supporting Windows 95 were showing their things. And so on the plane, as I was flying up to Seattle, I wrote a very simple uh, threaded sorting demo that became and was cleaned up by R&D. I think it was Chuck Jadsky, uh, this threading sort demo that, we, that we've had around for a long time. And Charlie Calvert wrote about it in one of his books. And, you know, I just kind of quickly hacked together um, with some terrible code on the plane. But, uh, but it showed what was possible. This is the, you know, vastly cleaned up version, but it dates way back again to, to those early days. And what it is, it's a, th a threaded sorting demo. It, it uses uh, uh, paint boxes here on Windows, the VCL application, to show the progress of a bubble sort, a selection sort, and a quick sort. And we know from our uh, numerical analysis programming and our computer science that uh, quick sort is faster than selection sort and bubble sort is the slowest, right? And we won't repeat sorting algorithms and, and how they work. Um, but under the covers, uh, it's just starting up, uh, you know, these different sorts. So here's my start on the start button click. I just say, okay, let's create a bubble sort, a T-bubble sort, and uh, and it has an array. And then we'll start the selection sort, and we'll start the quick sort. And then we want to set the on terminate for each of those to be thread done. And then the, the button gets enabled. And then under the covers, there is a code that actually executes the sorts. Uh, one of these allows you to set the name f of the thread for debugging using the old ANSI string class and getting the class name. So whether it's the bubble sort class or the or the quick sort class or the uh, or the selection sort class. And I, I commented out this one, this T thread, because what I wanted to do was was take a look for a moment at the T thread class and see some of its options. And of course, one of those is to call execute, uh, to yield, um, to sleep, and so on. And this is the older T-thread class that we've had for a long time, uh, you know, synchronizing, checking, terminated, all of that. And then we have this higher level parallel programming library uh, that we've introduced that gives you much more functionality in the world of tasks, uh, uh, parallel fours and so on. Um, and so this application, I'll just run it um, so you can visually see what happens. It starts up a thread for each of the sort algorithms. First, we generate random numbers and, and do paint, line, paint lines so that you can see the values rather than just having a linear list of numbers, for example. And then we click Start Sorting. You can visually see the speed of each of these threads getting started and quick sorts faster, selection sorts next, and so on. If we go under, uh, in this covers, there's a, a synchronized, because we need to be able to swap so that we can paint in the paint boxes 
of each to, of the progress of the of the sort. So the visual swap uh, up here just lets us paint in the different whatever uh, box for each sort, and we need to synchronize those so, so that uh, because the VCL is not thread safe, so that we can uh, take the values of each of the lines and keep repainting them along the way. So that was the early days of uh, of threading, and and again, all of this is inside of the the system classes HPP file. So synchronizes here, uh, queuing things, and so on, and then uh, and you know it's all part of the T thread class. All right. So next incarnation of this now was to use the parallel programming library. So let's take a look at uh, at this one. There's there's two different versions of this. This uses a parallel four. And uh, so on the button click, I'm going to use, use t the tParallel class, which is in the system threading library, systemthreading.hpp. And, uh, and then uh, we're going to use the parallel, the for method as part of the parallel for. This takes several parameters, uh, you know, if there's an owner, uh, uh, the beginning and end uh, iterator value, so one to max. In this case, max is fifty thousand, and then it, it it needs an iterator event, or that's one of the options is to pass something that has what looks like an event handler. It has a sender and it has the value of an index. So I declare my iterator event up here and give it that same under the cover signature, uh, and then inside of this I can run my method is prime passing the index and the is prime is the same method I can use uh, whether it's a parallel prime number generator or on button one click I just call is prime in a uh, in a sequential way and that should take longer instead of firing up all the cores and so this is the brute force uh, test for prime numbers to see if uh, if it's divisible by something, and if and if if it is, then it, and it's not a prime number, then break out and the, and return the bool as false. And so that on button one is the sequential version. Uh, fine, it runs. The the parallel version we call parallel four. So let me uncomment this out because I want to show you that parallel four has several different variations. So we can we can actually hit space and see things that are here. Uh, there's a loop state, loop resort, uh, iterator event, um, you know, 64-bit precision or not, and then there's you know the rest of the constructors and so on. But there's that parallel four method. So let's go again and put four there and uh, and look at it. And then these are all the different variations for parallel four. Uh, and so there, it's an overloaded method where you can just pass an iterator event. Uh, that's the first one up there on the screen. Uh, there's some other, uh, and there's the low and high values that we're passing to it. Uh, if you want to have a thread pool, you can pass that as an optional parameter at the end. Um, then down the way, there's uh, you can have a stride, which is how, how long things happen in which threads. It helps you identify uh, which parts of the parallel four are going to run in a certain thread or a couple of them in a thread and so on. You can also, there's an interface for for tasks, and we'll get to that in a minute. So there's different variations of things that are inside of the parallel four. And so let's just take a look at this. Oh, I should mention one other thing. There's this T interlocked class. And T interlocked uh, allows you in a, in a threaded application to do certain operations like increment uh, a value and this this tote is just a global variable defined in the form we can go and look it should be over there in the in the in the pub in this case it's in the public section so uh, it's a form variable and we can use that to increment the number of primes that we find so if it is a prime then we're going to update from any of the threads, uh, that total value of primes found. And we use this interlocked uh, class 
the increment method. So let me uncomment this for a moment, and we'll take a look at uh, at what we can do. So there's all sorts of methods in T interlock, increment, decrement, uh, you know, do some testing, uh, exchanging values, adding a value, and then there's the rest of the the you know, things that involve instances and so on. So it's a nice little class that's that you can use inside of a thread to do things like uh, you know count numbers and so on, add numbers together and such. Very simple, and then you can extend it in the usual uh, inheritance way to add other kinds of functionality as well. All right, so let's take a look at this is the uh, VCL version. So we'll uh, we'll just run this one. And this one, I guess, is a 64-bit Windows version. So if I click on button one, it's going to run the sequential. and says, OK, out of 50,000 numbers, it found 5,134 primes, and it took 434 milliseconds. Clicking button two, which will run the parallel version, it said, OK, we found the same number of primes, but it took one-fourth of the time. It took 123 milliseconds. And again, depending on what's going on in my machine, I'm running in a VM where I have four cores assigned. My MacBook Pro has eight cores. Uh, in my VM here, I've, I've set it up to give uh, this Windows 10 VM four of those eight cores so that I can run other VMs and, and there do their thing. We can do the same thing in, uh, in FireMonkey. And so in FireMonkey, we can then run the application in uh, on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and this is just the same application. The only difference is that uh, it's using a FireMonkey form, uh, but it's used the same code. I've got my memo, I've got my buttons, the exact same code. Here's the sequential version, uh, again, for the loop, and here's the, the parallel version. So this one, let's just run on, uh, we can run this on OS X, for example, if I start up my PA server. Let's uh, make sure that's running. And first time you run it after you start up, uh, you have to tell the Macintosh that it's OK for this process to, to get at the tools API. So my IP address may have changed for my connection. Let's copy that. And let's go back to uh, our ID. And let's make sure our connection is correct. OK, it looks like it's the same. I'll just, just to be sure, test the connection. It's all good. All right, so the same code. This time, FireMonkey, again, the parallel programming library, and tthread uh, class, all of those are available across all the platforms that we support. So let's go and uh, build this one for OS X, make sure it's all OK. And then we'll say, OK, linking, that's all good. And let's say run. And then it should switch over. And everybody sees that. So now I've got my for loop here. And it found 5,134 primes. That's good. And in this case, I'm not in my VM. I'm, I've got all the cores. So it can run even faster. Right? All right. And then, but it still finds the right primes. That's a good one. That's a good thing. And then finally, I wanted to show, and I showed this the other day. Um, this is using the task run and the t-task uh, class. And I'm passing a, a lambda uh, into the run. And then inside of here, I'm doing a thread synchronize. And the reason I, and I pass a lambda to that one, because I want to, inside of this uh, task run, I want to be able to update the user interface to say, is it working or is it done? Uh, the capture variables I need to, to pass into the Lambda, the this pointer, so it can know about memo one uh, that is in the user interface. And the iterator here, uh, I, I need to pass that in so that I can do the test of what's going on uh, right there. And so this example can run on, it's a FireMonkey example, it can run on, uh, on all the different platforms. And then I have button two, which is not in the task run, and it's just going to output the current value that I am, 
updating along the way and the value is being updated inside of the the task run for it's uh, the for loop inside of the task run and the value is defined over in the in the class and it's just in this case I put it in the private um, to protect it from other uh, other code all right now I, I commented out the T task here again because I wanted to go and show you what's available on the T task. Uh, so we have run. We can wait for any other tasks that might be running. If we start up multiple tasks, wait for any of those at the end of some logic. We can also wait for all. There's, I think, if I there's run of course, and that takes a sender and it takes a. Uh, uh, a, a notify event and and a, which is a a task interface and that allows me to use the lambda that that declaration so wait for any and i think there's a wait for all down here so we can do a wait for all we can see what the current task is we can go and check the status of each of the tasks for example and see are the, is it running is it is it stopped is it completed so you have all of that uh capability just in the t-task uh, class itself and in this case I'm using the again the run method so let's uh, run this one win 32 is fine um, just so we can watch so here we're just showing the value right we're just hitting and clicking the the show value but let's run the background task now it's running and sleeping working away that's that's that uh, call to thread synchronize so we can write to the user interface show value is just dumping out uh, oh three times okay that's fine I, I was playing around with this program and then it's all done uh, that was done up here when it completed and went through all of the iterations it wanted to do in this case five and uh, and we see the final value so just wanted to show you uh, some C++ parallel examples the old school just using T thread and then the the newer parallel programming library, which is in the system threading unit, and you should you should check the system threading unit out. The HPP file, uh, the parallel programming library, is implemented in in Delphi, but it's accessible uh, from C++, and you can build you know reactive and interactive user interfaces by using these thread classes and the threading library to build a more responsive application.